The following podcast is a next level production. Hello? Nani, hi. <laughs> Kamala? Is that you, beta? Is it okay if you move the phone a little further back? I, I can't see you. Oh, why don't you write to me? I wait for the post every day. Yeah, I'll get on that. Did you get my gifts? Huh? Yeah, look, um, about the bangle. What about? Wait, which one? What? The bangle, it does some really weird things oh, and, and that it's... That bangle belongs to my mother, Aisha. The one who disappeared during partition, my great-grandmother, Aisha. Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is a spoiler-full podcast about Miss Marvel Season 1, Episode 2, entitled Crushed. Crushed. So, uh, Steve, what is the synopsis for this particular episode? Well, short and to the point, Kamala and Bruto explore the source of her newfound powers just in time for a perilous adventure. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) Short to the point. Short and sweet. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> but uh, what were your overall thoughts about this particular episode? I think we got everything, again, just like we, we just talked about with the boys. I think we got almost everything we asked for, uh, that we were asking for from last week's episode. <laughs> the The only thing for me, I will say, the first time I watched it in that cold open when she's coming into the school... I was like, what is, is this a, is this a daydream or a, cause, cause it was all the reactions were the, you know, exact opposite of the first episode when she entered the school. And, and so I, I was, I got, I was a little confused at first. And then when the, it just kept going, I went, well, I guess she's just found a newfound confidence because of her powers. And so, and people are seeing that and they're, you know, when, if you carry yourself with a certain amount of confidence, People are going to see that, and they're they're not going to react in certain ways. Like the guy with the basketball, not not the one the not the one that she played with, but the one that she stopped. You know, um, so I thought that was that was really cool that this character has grown very suddenly into this very confident. But then by the end of the episode, we see her kind of losing a little bit of confidence. So, uh, but I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Hmm. But yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, I, I this episode is fun overall. I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of eye awakening for me for uh, how uh, a mosque is, the religion, uh, how they're viewing of women within that particular religion too, and it was pretty interesting. I'm I'm glad we got a lot of this diversity in this world now, where they can present these things to us so we can learn something. Because a lot mm-hmm. of people just walk around with blinders; they don't know anything about about somebody else's culture and. To me, I, I like that. Uh, I know a lot of people who are Muslim. I have a friend. His name is Mark, too. And he kind of introduced that to me in, in the 90s. But I didn't. This elaborated more on that for me. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Uh, I really th- love the idea of the training on the rooftop <laughs> with mm-hmm. Bruno and her. That was I, great. That was so cool. Uh, I, you know, I like that uh, we got a little bit more of her friend, Nakia. In it. We got a lot more. We got a lot more in IKEA. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we said last week, because you know, we only had like three two or three brief scenes with her where she said a couple of lines and then we didn't see her. This episode we get her through the whole thing just about. Yeah. And their relationship too. Because mm-hmm. they're almost like sisters, if you think about it, the way they oh, yeah. they treat each other. Mm-hmm. And I think they're cousins. I think they I, I don't it. think I think the aunt and uncle thing, I think that's just a term of endearment. Okay. That they that they use that because she calls all the aunties the aunties oh, and all the uncles true. the uncles. Yeah. So I, I think it's just like a term that it would like like I have. There's lots of people in my life because I'm a single man with no uh, no wife and no children. So there's there's lots of kids that call me Uncle Steve that are same here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the so, feeling. So I think that's I think that's all it is. I think it's just a term that they use for any older male, older female mm-hmm. in their in their life. But that's why it makes it so easy for that lie. 
to come out when she lies to the brother about who he is mm-hmm. at the at the diner. She says, "Oh, this is our cousin," Not you know, <laughs> she, yeah, wh- whatever, whatever, and uh, and he he changes his voice. I thought that, that was a I thought that was a great a great scene where he he's talking British with his British accent and his and the brother's like, "Well, why are you talking in a British accent?" He goes, "Oh," and then he slips into the in the Pakistani uh, Indian kind of accent and. Uh, I, I will admit I don't know I don't know world history geography of of India Bangladesh Pakistan I'm I'm sorry listeners I've not I did a little I did a little bit of a Wikipedia um, investigation kind of thing or research to try to to understand what they were talking about with that whole partition thing yeah. and so apparently I guess India or part of India is no longer India it's now two separate. Yes. It's Bangladesh and, and Pakistan. And so – and and that's kind of where the, that uh, – when the British left and there was just kind of a civil war to break out to who would be in control of the country. So – Yeah, and we got – yeah, we get a little history lesson too with mm-hmm. the show. <laughs> and uh, I may research some more about that just to understand it more to – because it's it's not clear, and they didn't they weren't a hundred percent clear on it. Because obviously, you you know, it's interesting they're portraying these people who have had these very traumatic events happen within their lives. I mean, they were children. You know, the mother was just a child when this happened because it was the great grandmother who was the one that disappeared, not the grandmother who she uh, talked to on the phone. Yeah. So I got that when I watched that. I finally got that cleared up in my head. The the in the, in the second watch that I did here recently was it was the great grandmother that disappeared. She talked to her grandmother on her on the on the phone. Yeah, I think the grandmother was the one the story was about, uh, and the mother was a little child when this all happened. Came to play. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's, it's interesting to get this this other countries and other histories um, that we here in America don't are not usually exposed to and other countries, you know, it's, it's one of those weird things as from American standpoint, probably there's a lot of other countries that probably study some American history just because it's just because, yeah. you know, yeah. but we don't study a lot of, we have, you know, I, I think I, I remember taking one world history class, but I, I couldn't tell you anything about it. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, same here. I, I was terrible at history, but it, it does intrigue me too because once you get somebody who actually gives it to you in somewhere, some media form, so you can understand it better, it helps. Right. And I yeah. like that about this. Yeah, yeah. I love that they're, that we're opening this up. This, the, this, and I said that last week when we were talking about Moon Knight is a di- is a diverse culture, yeah. and and now we have this one. This is a diverse culture. So it's, it's it's cool that Disney is opening us up to these things. Yeah. All right. Well, with that, we should move into our highlights. Uh, sure. Our favorite highlights within the, the episode. Oh, no, 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 no. Come on. Somebody stole my shoes. My new Versace's. And the mosque street thief has struck again. We got way more. We already kind of talked a little bit about it. We got way more of Nakia uh, in this in this episode, the girl who was wearing the, the hijab. And I thought that was great. I loved that moment. And it took me the second watch to figure out what they were doing when they went to the mosque and they were trying to – and they were at the, the faucets. They were washing the makeup off their face. Ah, because that's they, they that were, I, that's 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 the only thing I can figure they were doing is probably because in that culture, they're probably not supposed to wear makeup. And so they had to wash the makeup off their face before they would go into where the, the prayer meeting, the mosque, or that yeah, where that where that area of the mosque. And of course, then we see we see that Kamala puts one on. But I love that conversation they have in the bathroom where Nakia says, you know that 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 she wasn't white enough for the white people and she wasn't ethnic enough for ethnic people. Yeah. And so she started wearing the hajib to think it would, it would help, but it didn't end up helping anything. And so now she just wears it because it's part of her. It's who yeah. she is and how I love that, that self-confidence she has of, I'm just going to be me. This is who I am. I'm going to be this person and the world can do whatever it wants. I'm going to, I'm going to wear what I want. I'm going to believe what I want. And I thought that was, I thought that was really kind of, kind of, nice and kind of great but uh, yeah i love that i love their relationship and even though they have different takes on it and different you know of that culture they still are friends and they're still good friends yeah and 
the funny thing too about that it shows uh like it's still americanized because the girls in the mosque itself during the uh mm-hmm. i guess you could so- call it a service yeah. that they're having <laughs> they have their phones they're instagramming <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the one woman takes it takes it away. Yeah, I love yeah, that whole that was great to see to get to see that kind of like you said, that culture that we don't normally see, you yeah. know, and her her speaking up and and the the uh the sheik saying, "Well, I'm glad you're here today, but don't interrupt my lesson." Basically yep. is what he was saying and he's like these partitions and all these things are here. To, I thought it was interesting that he used the same word partition that's used about the civil war. Uh, between the males and the females here in the mosque, I thought it was was interesting, yeah. and it's falling apart too. According to them, yeah. they got mold underneath the rugs. They just put something, slap a poster over something that's falling yeah. apart. You could see the pipes are not working. So you know, mm-hmm. she <laughs> Nikki is like, oh, I, yeah. oh, I got to get this. So because and then they're washing their feet, they're washing their hands, they're washing their face. Yeah, yeah it, it shows that it's like not being taken care of, and mm-hmm. obviously, you know how they're separate because. Women are left to the back, and all the men have all the good seats in the front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought that was great. I, I thought it was great that uh, Kamala convinces her to run uh, for the mosque board, and so even though she's, I, I, I'm assuming they're like 16. I guess she's getting her driver's license, so she must be 16. Yeah, at, at least this 16. Point. They're 16, 17. Yeah, um, 16 is when you start getting your learner's permit yeah. in New York and New Jersey, and then by the time you're 17, you have a full license. Okay. Yeah, and so so. It's cool that she has this opportunity to run for the board and, you know, like she's uh, – and again, I'll, I've got some more about it in my notes later. But I love that at the Eid, how they had all that that little celebration. She had all those different groups that she was going to have to interact with. And then when she went and interacted with Kamala's father, she's she's like telling him, well, can you vote for me? And he's like, well, this guy's my best friend and he's running. And she's like, well, but I'm Kamala's best friend, so you should vote for me. <laughs> you know, And we're women and we're finally women getting the right to vote and all this kind of I think she's playing to that that kind of side of it to go give us give us this power you've given us this power to vote let us do it so yeah i, I just I, I love this character of the kai nikia i i don't i didn't catch exactly how it's pronounced so i, I <laughs> um, say nikia <laughs> nikia okay this this uh, of nikia sometimes they call her nax uh, huh. uh which that confused me for a while because i thought they were calling her mags and i was like where are they getting that name from but i think it was nax they were calling her probably but uh, but yeah, I love this character. And I, I I'm glad we're getting more of her. Yeah, same here. Uh, I she's very a, a very interesting character. Uh, mm-hmm. I think because if you not to shoot into the future ahead uh, scene when they're leaving the party and they're in the car, Bruno's. I already said it. I thought Bruno had like a crush on mm-hmm. Kamala at one point, but I could see Nikia and him getting involved later on. Oh. Maybe, but I I was more the impression that she was kind of making fun of him because he's crushing on Kamala. That, that was she what was, she was definitely. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But I, oh, I see what you're saying. There could be a playful kind of thing between them. It could be a Xander Cordela kind of thing. Yeah. From, from and then uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if Nakia actually learns of Kamala's powers at a at a later point. Oh yeah, I'm sure that's that's gonna happen here. That's it's got to happen sometime, especially now that we see the end of this episode where Cameron. Uh, is revealed to know something about her because this woman, th- his mother, the woman in the back of the car, the credits did not identify who she was. I did screenshot the credits. I was trying to figure out there was no credited person for uh, Camram's mom. Hmm. They didn't say her name. So I don't know uh, what she's credited as in the credits. They did credit, though, the one female agent in the credits, and this is kind of going off on the point we we're doing now, but is is credited as DODC agent Cheever, and okay. then the other guy is just the the guy is just agent whatever his name is. So it is the Department of Damage Control yep. um, that's so, actually in the credits. So. Awesome. So we got a, an actual uh, confirmation now <laughs> that tie into the MCU. Yeah, exactly. For sure. Or at least an alternate, maybe an alternate. <laughs> And, and to speak about it, uh, it's Allison, uh, Al- Alicia Rainier, or Rainer, who is Agent Sadie Deaver, which is part Deaver, of- Deaver, okay. Yeah, over the, uh, uh, for the DOD. And I recognized her from something, and it was bothering me, so I had to look it up, and yep, she was the head of the prison in Orange is the New Black. Oh, That's okay. where I remembered her from. Okay. So I thought that was pretty cool that we got her. Yeah. But yeah, but getting back to the whole Bruno Kamala Cameron 
thing, uh, <laughs> Nakia. Uh, I, it's, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Cause I, I, that, that would be an interesting twist to have Nakia. And if, if Kamala actually does get with Cameron, it yeah. would be interesting to, to see Bruno and, and Nakia maybe kind of, uh, but I think you're gonna have the same culture clash that he would have. He got with Kamala. Correct. But, uh, but you know, we, I, I think we did talk about it, but I think we talked about it in regards to him not having any romantic feelings towards her in the mm. first episode. We thought more of a brother sister kind of thing, but this one that's obvious in this one that they're, yeah. that he had, he feels way strongly for her than, than she does for him. And she doesn't even, the funny thing is it's just like, it's normally in television shows and movies. She doesn't realize it, but everybody else around her realizes it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's kind of oblivious to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you also see that with Bruno too, with the, uh, the counselor, the school counselor, and he's talk. He, he could get into this. Uh, what was it? I forget which college? Caltech. 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 Mm -hmm. And he didn't want to leave because he doesn't want to leave Kamala. Obviously. Kamala. Yeah. Yeah. So that that these are little clues and clued in, and you see his jealousy obviously within the car when they talk about you know uh, when Cameron and Kamala are just like talking over. It's like, oh, you're a Bollywood fan? Oh, of course I am. And then you yeah. know, it's like, do you like? What movie do you think is the best? Uh, Bazigar. So, and then of course Bruno says, "I saw it once." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was pretty cool. Uh, the fact that uh, Cameron, uh, once she got in the car with Cameron and his mom, her face when I looked at it, and I'm, I, you could tell me if I'm wrong, but was that the woman that Kamala sees? I, see, and that's building? where I'm confused about because it certainly looked like her, but I'm like, if she's seeing a vision of her great grandmother, how could this be her great grandmother? So I don't know. Maybe she's seeing a vision. I, I I don't know. I'm I'm right there with you. I was a little confused the first, the very first time when they showed the woman in the back seat. I was like, oh, that's the woman she's been seeing in the vision. Mm -hmm. And then Cameron says it's his mother, and I'm like, well, wait a minute, that can't be the woman she's seeing. If she's seeing her great grandmother in these visions. Well, maybe she's not seeing a great, I don't know. So I, I think that's something that's the mystery. I had that. The, the mystery is, is, um, you know, what are these flashbacks she's having? And we, we assume they're flashbacks to the partition and yeah. what we, they talked about that the woman disappearing on the train, but, uh, hmm. you know, so I, I think it's going to be something that's going to be revealed later. What, what it is exactly. Yeah. My thought first was like, okay, it looks like her. If it is her, maybe this is Kamala's kind of spider sense and the power is giving her of like, this is the enemy or this oh, is the okay. bad guy, the big bad or whatever. Because there's always a big bad in any of these shows. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's why. And that's why Cameron was uh, kind of snuggling up to her, trying to get right. in her good graces. And that way her mother has a way, his mother has a way in. To yeah. get to Kamala at some point because she has this bangle and maybe that is why she's going after her. I yeah, don't know. I'm interested to see how this how this whole thing plays out. It's definitely it's definitely got me intrigued enough to want to watch the next episode when it comes out. So same here. Uh, one that I liked uh, the training montage. I loved it. <laughs> it was so fun to see that uh, her learning the powers. They uh, are not exactly from the bangle itself. It basically enhances something within her and her creativity. Yeah, so, I thought that was interesting that he was able to, with his iPad or whatever, he was able to scan her. Yep. And he said, he said the power isn't coming from the bangle. Maybe the bangle unlocked it, is what he says. Meaning so that I was it's little... something within her. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, they give an actual like name for the powers, calling it hard light. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. Uh, uh, the the one cute scene is when she's like trying to walk on the hard light itself, and and she falls, and she's holding on, and then he's like, <laughs> "Just gotta drop, you gotta drop." You think she's high up? No, it's just yeah. the next platform down. <laughs> yeah, just, I, that was great. I, that scene had me rolling both times when I watched it because the first time I was like, "Wait a minute, how high up are there?" And she's just saying, "Let go of me," and then he lets go, and she just kind of drops three feet, and I'm like, "Okay, I don't know what the big deal was here." So yeah, I love that fake out. That was a really good fake out for us. Yep, uh, I just love that you. We already spoke about Nakia and everything. That that whole scene where they go, and it, it reminded me of my Italian family how 
you have certain people, they all go in their little groups, they talk about the aunties, they talk mm-hmm. about this section, that section. I can't remember them all. I should have wrote yeah, them down. Yeah, I got I've got a couple oh, I've got a couple of them here. Um there was the Mosque Bros <laughs> and then there was the pious something. Uh, I didn't get – there was the pious something that she said, like the pious parishioners or, or something like that, that were the the the, the boys who were like more uh, uh, traditional. And then she said the mini Hanarambi, Hanarambi girls. And then there was another couple groups. And then, of course, the Eliminantes. I thought was, I thought it was great. The Illuminantes were, were, were great. So, kind of like a yeah. reference to uh, the Illuminati in the right, MCU. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know if you caught this, but Bruno was giving me flashes of Marty McFly with his uh, getup. With, with, with the, the sunglasses and that, that orange vest. Yeah. vest and the yeah. flannel. And I'm like, wow. Is he trying to be like Michael J. Fox? <laughs> yeah, I didn't catch that. But now that you say that, 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 I him when he had the when he had the sunglasses down on his nose, I was kind of like, "What is that familiar? Why is that familiar to me?" And that's what it was. It's Marty McFly. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, I loved Zoe's interrogation when they, you know, the, the police come and they take Zoe in because she's yes. had contact with the superhero. And at first, the guy is being all nice to her and saying like, "Oh, we all follow you here, and we, you know, you we loved your popcorn video or whatever." And then when they get deeper into the interrogation, he actually starts to get mean. And then the woman comes in and she's like, she's like, well, who is she? Did she have an accent? Was she Asian? Was she Latin X? Was she, what was she? And and then they figure out that, okay, she must've been, she doesn't know who she is. She kind of knows what she looks like. So they figure out to look at all the temples, mosques and community centers in the area. And that's eventually how they do find her. So, yeah. And the cool part about that scene, we'll go right into it. This is the, uh, Scene, of course, when Kamala saves the boy from the top of the mm-hmm. mosque. Uh, he was climbing up there for who knows what. <laughs> Instagram. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right. Instagram. He's taking pictures with his phone. <laughs> uh, she gets him to land on the hard light, as it were, mm-hmm. for the platform. And he's there. And then she gets distracted. Uh, by that vision. By that we're vision. Still not sure and then you know, that- the kid winds up hurting his leg in the end. But she did save him at one point. But then we see her running. Because the DOD is there, and they got drones that look like Stark drones. Mm-hmm. And they're coming after her, and she was able to elude them. And that was oh, pretty yeah. cool. That was great. And I, you know, I love that scene because we see the emotion on her voice and how she's distraught over the fact that she almost – you know, she almost let this kid die. Yeah. You can see that. Like, she hasn't articulated that yet, but you could definitely see the emotion on her voice and hear it in her breath when she was like, she was so upset mm. that she almost could have caused this kid's, you know, not save this kid. And, and what would have happened? What would, have, you know, what would have happened to her then? You know, like you said, all he hurt was like his ankle. It, he would have died. So, yeah. Uh, you know, so I don't know if something's going to come back with that, you know, because they're always – ever since the whole Sokovia Accords and everything, mm-hmm. they always come back to superheroes and why they're bad for whatever. Yeah, but, v- pretty much like the soups in The Boys if we think about yeah, it. Yeah, it's like they're yeah, trying to yeah. stop them but or she's something. But she's got to change that name. She's got to get that name changed. Nightlight is not a – that's not a good <laughs> name. <That's> no. <laughs> No, it's not at all. And and did you did you catch her do the superhero land when yes. she jumped from yep. the hard light to the roof? And yep. She does the does the Black Widow superhero land. I thought was great. Uh, I just love seeing that. That was pretty cool. Yep. Well, a lot of the stuff I liked within the episode was the music, and mm-hmm. very much like what we talked about with Moon Knight. I just love the ethnic music that's in there. Because they kind of put of a modern mix of that ethnic music, and it shows what uh, Disney Disney Plus is doing with this stuff, uh, just opening our ears as well as our eyes to all this cool and interesting uh, ethnic work, yeah, and world that we have. Very very cool. Uh, I I just pulled everything that I had from my notes, but uh, yeah, I think that's everything I've got. Um, we talked about the rescue a little bit. Um, oh, the mosque shoe thief. Uh, oh, yes, I can't wait. I want to see how this plays out throughout the rest of the season. Or I, I hope this isn't just a one-off thing to where I hope we're so gonna. Too. Because she said she's had 22 pairs of shoes uh, stolen, and that other little kid kind of sticks her head and goes, the mosque thief strike, the mosque yep. shoe thief strikes again, <laughs> and then goes away. And I'm like, 
where the what, who is this little kid? And so yeah, I, I thought that was great. The mosque shoe thief. I can't wait to hear what that is. <laughs> Uh, a quote that I actually liked was uh, with Kamala and the kid on the roof or on the mosque, uh, top of the mosque, and she's trying to save him. She's trying to calm him down. She goes, well, what's your favorite food? And the boy says, ice cream, pizza. She goes, is that two foods or one? And the kid was like, no, it's two. <laughs> it's like, I put ice cream on pizza. Ew. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> but that's an interesting take. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, all the uh, the hashtags and all the people that were ice cream pizza on the, the social media stuff. Yep. It all um, shows up. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Uh, the only quote I've got is, is from that beginning uh, montage where she's entering the school and she walks up to the people who are blocking her lockers. And she says, you know what I love about AirPods is that you don't actually have to stand this close to each other. Love you guys. I'm rooting for you. Favorite couple. And then she just leaves. <laughs> I just, I just love, I actually, I actually had to pause that so I could get all that whole, like, pause it and back it up and pause it. And, yeah. And get, Cause I wanted to get that exact quote. I was just like, I just thought it was so interesting. Again, it just played into the fact that she has this newfound confidence. Cause remember the last time when she asked them to get away from her locker, they kind of gave her the cold shoulder and she was just like, okay, I guess I'll just Google the periodic table, you know, yeah. but this time she actually tells them, she actually physically moves them and says, scoot, you know, so I thought it was great. Uh, I, I can't wait to, again. It's just, this is a very fun character. It's been a while. I think mean, maybe Peter Parker, but it's really been a while since we've had a fun character like this. Or Ant-Man, things of that I, nature. I, I yeah. guess Ant-Man. Yeah, Ant-Man in a way is also, we get a little bit of him. And I love that line where she, where she compares herself to she was trying to do the powers of Ant-Man. And she says, both of us look younger than we are, which is a whole thing about Paul Rudd. Everybody <laughs> says he looks way younger <laughs> which than is he true. is. <laughs> it is true. Yeah, I, so I thought that was, I thought that was great. Yeah. I, I really love all the, the little things that Disney's putting into this show. Yeah, they, they they have a way of poking fun even at the reality of the world that we live in, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. breaking the fourth wall. No Deadpool to do that yet, though. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, it, it was a great episode, I thought. I, I, I filled everything that I wanted to see all in one, and I thought it was pretty cool. Again, we get another little glimpse of the, the dad, his kind of his just, – just his – he's, uh, he's a very loving and caring father – Mm-hmm. Uh, to her, the the mother, we we definitely have more. We got more of a sense of the mother trying to keep her from. I, I'm a. I can only assume that the mother knows something about these powers. I think she and, does as well, and she's trying to keep her away from it. So, mm-hmm. all right. Well, I think we covered this. Yep, as much as we can. <laughs> <laughs> so that was our coverage on Miss Marvel. So uh, on to uh, podcast recommendations. Um, the only thing I've got for podcast recommendations this week is a Strange Indeed on Podcastica. They're covering Stranger Things season four, even though Netflix dropped you know the whole first half of the season. They're covering it week by week, and then when that show comes back for its last two episodes or three episodes, uh, I can't remember. Um, they'll cover it week to week again, but I send them regularly send them voicemails as well. So, so check out strange indeed. If you're a stranger things fan. Yep. I'm keeping up and I'm listening to them both Pake and Rima on stranger things, uh, strange indeed on stranger things. Uh, I got to watch that in one full swoop, but I should go back and watch specific episodes again, just to refresh my memory. Yeah. I've got to watch the next, I I'd only, I've only watched up through the last episode they podcasted on. So I've got to, do the next one. I think they're podcasting this weekend. Yep. Uh, that, yeah, I would definitely say uh, Run for Your Lives. They've been covering mm-hmm. a, a few episodes that uh, old movies that I liked. Uh, the last one I listened to was The Gate. I thought oh, that was yeah. pretty cool. So I'm waiting on from when they do the new Jurassic World movie that's come that's come out. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to listening to that. Absolutely. Um, well, let's talk about how people could submit their feedback since we didn't okay. get any feedback, but, uh, let, let them know exactly how to send feedback. Certainly. Absolutely. You are again, as we say every week, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice, whether that's Google play, Spotify, Apple podcasts, or whatever you use. If there's a chance to give us a rating or review on there, we would love for you to do that. They will usually email us and let us know that, that review has come in. We'll give you a shout out here on the program. Exactly. And you could uh, check us out 
on our website, which would be panels2pixelspodcast.com. We are on Facebook, facebook.com slash panels2pixels. We are also on Twitter, and you can find us at panels2pixels, and that's panels and the number two pixels. You can send us an email. We love to hear your voices and emails. You can send us an email at panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels1, the T-O spelled out right in the middle, and the number one at gmail.com. Yeah, with that, you could actually just type out a regular email. We'll read it on the actual podcast when we record. Or if you'd sure. like, we'll if you want to record your voice, just like Steve does when he sends out feedback to everybody, <laughs> just send it to us and then we'll play it and we'll listen to it uh, as we're recording and we'll give our thoughts on what you had to say. So keep that in mind. We are currently on YouTube, as you all know. Obviously, the Kevin Smith interview for episode 200 is up. Go check it out there. It's also on our Facebook page. But definitely go to YouTube. Please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like what we do. It's basically the podcast on YouTube. But all you have to do is search Panels to Pixels Podcast. We are also on Instagram at Panels to Pixels Podcast. That's Panels to Pixels Podcast, all spelled out with letters. Awesome. And we highly recommend you check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all, especially Wilhelm with Ben Beck as he does his interviews with celebrities, as well as the top fives of a variety of different subject matters, whether it be an actor, a particular movie series, or genre. So check that out on Wilhelm, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and there's so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check them all out there with their links. Coming up, we have a lot of content that'll be coming your way. We're obviously you're listening to Miss Marvel. We are also covering the boys on this feed. Uh, coming up soon, we will start covering the Umbrella Academy as well when that drops. So uh, you'll start hearing uh, probably maybe multiple episodes with multiple um, podcasts on it or shows that we cover. So just check out our posts and uh, see what you want to listen to. Exactly. And where else can listeners hear us, Steve? Well, I send voicemails, as I already mentioned, to our friends, other friends podcasts, and they usually play those and they're very gracious to let me have my, my voice on their podcast. And so you could, might hear me on there or straight on Strange Indeed. But of course, you can always hear me right here on Panels to Pixels. Awesome. Well, you could also hear me on my other podcast, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and that could be found on the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. There we cover action, adventure, fantasy, thriller, suspense movies. Currently, we're going to have a few episodes shoot up this week, so check them all out. I would say we're continuing our coverage on the Planet of the Apes series with Jerry and I. Top Gun Maverick, our review of that. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, go out, check it out. It's a combined effort between Watched It in the 80s, that's on Pirate Core Entertainment, as well as Adrenaline Cinema. So it's going to be the same podcast, but on both feeds. So that way we're expanding our audience. So check those out when they come out. I look forward to hearing it. Yeah, same here. And I did it. <laughs> All right, so that was our coverage of Miss Marvel, and I just want to thank everybody for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night.